welcome to Three Count Commentaries. I am your host, Mongo Slade. Today, we're going to talk about an article from The Sportster about why Britt Baker's return is not exactly a good thing for AEW. The article is entitled, Why the AEW Women's Division Has Surpassed Dr. Britt Baker. And it's, it's an interesting article, but of course it hinges on uh, gossip. A lot of gossip, a lot of unfair things being said. The highlights we'll get into. The, we're going to skip re- really to the last one. Um, but I think it's worth going through. Because Britt Baker's been brought back in a pretty significant spot. And uh, there's already some, some fans griping. And she's like the girl MJF. I've kind of compared the two before. And um, you're seeing now that the AEW fan base, to some degree, is starting to turn on Britt. (laughs) So, here's the highlights from the article. Britt Baker's return to AEW highlights the division's growth without her. The second point says AEW has several more talented and deserving women for the top spot. Okay. And the third is Britt Baker's past behavior has been toxic, damaging co-workers' mental health. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. It says, this is uh, part of the uh, prologue, I guess. For the last two years, Britt Baker's character in AEW has been centered on the fact that she was the first woman to sign with AEW in 2019. The charm of being the homegrown star wore off relatively quickly, especially as she was outclassed and outshined by her ally, Jamie Hayter. It doesn't matter who's been in AEW the longest. But who has done the most with the time they've had? Who's uplifted the women's division the most? Probably not Britt Baker. Okay. This is an interesting statement. Considering I know that the AEW fan base really likes Jamie Hayter. Nobody knows who she is. Like the most viral stuff that they've done with the women's division until recently when, you know, when Mercedes came in. Has been Britt Baker bleeding all over the place with Thunder Rosa. That really has been what they've done. What is, you know, they put Britt out there and let her beat herself to death. And it's crazy that this young girl, you know, I think she's about 30 now, maybe, is having seizures, mentally all kind of screwed up. She was out there bleeding all over the place. Remember when we was all criticizing those matches for even existing. And I had significant criticisms of her matches with like Thunder Rosa and stuff. These people were like, Oh, it was so much fun. It was great. But now here it is two years later. They're kind of like, eh, I don't like you very much. Miss Baker. I don't like you very much. I'm like, okay. I don't know. So this is the first point. So let's go through some of the, some of the points from the first point about the the division growing without Britt Baker. It says, It sounds cruel, but it's true. Britt Baker's absence allowed AEW's women's division to flourish like it never had before. And they mentioned Deanna Perrazzo, who is not featured on this show at all. Mercedes Monet, who, of course, is one of the biggest female wrestling stars in the world. So, of course. And uh, they mentioned Willow Nightingale, Stephanie Vacker. Um, it says, uh, The championship scene with Tony Storm, Mina Shirikawa, and uh, Mariah May. Okay. I like that at the very least. But it says, uh, is it any coincidence that the women's division blossomed while Britt Baker was away? It's hard to believe so. I don't believe that. I think that in sports, sometimes when you're the sixth man, you're the backup quarterback and you come in and you overperform. I do believe that you've earned a spot on the team. You you know, are you, maybe you earned the spot to be the starter. You know, um, and the the fact of the matter is this: everybody, most of these people, like me and Sherry Kyle, was not even around when Britt Baker was there. Um, neither was Mercedes Monet. Jamie Hayter, as much as everybody likes her, she's been gone about as long as Britt Baker's been gone. And outside of having good matches, who, who really knows anything about Jamie Hayter and who really cares? Um, and Mercedes is fairly new. You know, Thunder Rosa just came back within the last year. Deanna Perrazzo is, you know, they've already kind of moved on from her. So, I mean, you could say Tony Storm especially 
has blossomed. Willow Nightingale definitely has blossomed. Uh, Chris Statlander, they just haven't done enough with her, but she has potential. And these are people who were on the roster when Britt was there. They just weren't being used. This is a tragedy of booking. This is not like Britt Baker was intentionally or somehow screwing with these girls' careers. It was pretty obvious to everybody that, hey, this girl might have talent. Use her. But they were insisting on using Britt Baker until they couldn't. And then all of a sudden, they didn't have a choice. So here it, here it goes. He says, this is the second point. AEW has many women on the roster who can do anything Britt Baker can do. And they can do it better. Oh. Oh. Uh, <laughs> if these women were given any opportunities on the mic and in the ring as Britt, there's no doubt they would surpass her star power almost immediately. The list of these women were Mercedes Monet and Deanna Perrazzo, uh, Chris Statlander, Tony Storm, Mariah May, Thunder Rosa, Anna Jay, and Athena. So she basically named all the girls <laughs> without actually listening to any of them. Look, as far as promos are concerned, which is Britt Baker's strong suit is her promo ability. Um, she, for years, was far and away the best promo on the roster. That should go without saying. And there are girls now who can talk. Tony Storm is really good at promos in her new character, which developed within the last two years. She has been cutting really tremendous promos. Um, Thunder Rosa is still not that great when it comes to promos. Chris Statlander barely talks. Mariah May, eh, I don't know. I really don't, haven't heard a lot from her. Haven't heard a lot from Anna Jay either. And Athena's been on the roster for three years and they don't do anything. She's just been running around Ring of Honor. Nobody cares that she exists. And Deanna Perrazzo isn't a great promo either. So it's like when you try to stack up the ability to cut promos, the only one that's in the same conversation with Britt Baker in terms of promo is Tony Storm. Um, even Mercedes, to a degree, is not a great promo and she's not a really a great personality either um it's going to be very interesting watching the two of them interact and watching how the the crowd re reacts to them but this is the big one this is the one we've all been waiting for Britt baker brings drama to the locker room oh brother so let's read a little bit more of this one than we did of the other two it says back in 2022 thunder rosa had to step away from the ring due to a painful debilitating back injury Tony Khan consequently crowned an interim AEW Women's Champion. Britt Baker decided to play ringmaster for a smear campaign against Thunder Rosa, accusing her of holding the division back and claiming that she was simply being lazy. On Busted Open Radio, Thunder Rosa opened up about how the hardship she faced during her injury made her suicidal. While she didn't name Britt Baker in this interview, it's hard to imagine that Baker's bullying didn't contribute to Rosa's hard time. All right, let's pause right here because Tony Storm was also involved with that. And she, remember, Tony Storm was talking trash about, you know, uh, Thunder Rosa as the world champion, if I remember correctly, because she was the interim world champion for a long time. And she was doing the post match scrums, taking digs at Thunder Rosa. So, be, just to check, fact check myself, it was. The All Out Scrum, the same one CM Punk was eating a muffin, you know, cussing out the people backstage, where Tony Storm was the interim women's champion and said, quote, Thunder Rosa says she's injured. Okay, when she says she's not injured, she can come back and lose to me, and that will be that. That led to, that was in uh, September of 2022. In October, Thunder Rosa had to respond to this by saying, quote, they haven't given me a time yet to come back. I'm saying it's January, and I hope it's January. And if Tony Storm disagrees with what's decided in the back, that's not my problem. That is not my problem, Tony. Because Tony Storm didn't like being the interim champion. So, it's fair to blame Britt Baker for, you know, this situation. But you're also giving props to Tony Storm, who was involved with this. So... Wouldn't it be fair to also take a swipe at Tony Storm for perpetuating that, you know, Thunder Rosa was exaggerating her injury? 
Here's another one. Uh, this one is more ridiculous, and you're probably going to, if you don't groan, you're probably going to burst out laughing. Let's see which happens. Brit also has a nasty track record of upholding abusive men, such as former Steelers quarterback and alleged rapist Ben Roethlisberger and wife beater Johnny Depp. Brit shows all the symptoms of being a what Gen Z dubs a pick-me, a woman who puts down other women to win men's favor. Her in-ring abilities already make her unworthy of being the face of the AEW's women's division, but her attitude all but guarantees she will only hold the rest of the division back. Now more than ever, the women of AEW need to show solidarity with one another. Britt Baker has shown she has no interest in doing so. This is psychotic. And and you know what? This, this was so psychotic. The very first comment from this article says, quote, I can't think of a worse wrestling take in the last few years. You take yourself way too seriously, bruh. This is a girl. <laughs> a girl wrote this article. <laughs> but this this woman referred to Britt Baker as a pick me because she supports Ben Roethlisberger and Johnny Depp. Two things. Well, she's from Pittsburgh and Ben Roethlisberger was the Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback. She's supporting the quarterback for her football team. Yeah, Ben Roethlisberger was accused of rape a couple times, actually. I was surprised he was accused of rape so many times and was allowed to play football. But, yeah, I mean, uh, it's not a surprise. And wife beater Johnny Depp, that's very weird. I don't want to get into the Johnny Depp thing. I really don't want to get into that. That's a whole wormhole of issues about whether Johnny Depp is a wife beater or not. It seems to me that Amber Heard, there was plenty of evidence that she was actually the one that was being abusive as well, but whatever. But this is what, for those of you who just want to know, this is what Britt Baker said about Johnny Depp. She, she says, quote, Pirates is my all-time favorite movie, and Johnny Depp is my favorite actor. I'm probably a little too invested in his trial, but good for him for not being threatened into silence. And she later says that we stand Johnny. So this is an interesting phenomenon here because the Johnny Depp situation is a menagerie of complex issues involving mostly a very grimy, dirty, disgusting divorce. And I didn't follow the trial. All I know is he won the defamation case and he won a bunch of money, but I don't know the ins and outs of it. I also know that she was abusive towards him as well, verbally abusive, physically abusive towards him. And it was just a toxic relationship in general. Um, the idea that she's supposed to take some kind of side in that situation, which you, you don't really have to, but considering she chose the side of Johnny Depp, I don't know, who cares really? You know, I don't think, usually women who are pygmies, they find smaller issues to be pygmies over. But not really a Johnny Depp situation. And then when Ben Roethlisberger is the quarterback for your, your local football team, I mean, he didn't go to prison. So, I mean, it is what it is. So, <laughs> but this writer is a very silly woman. Britt Baker is not perfect. She's not perfect at all. She can actually be quite, kind of annoying. And she can have a really bad attitude. And she does have a very mean girl in high school approach to pro wrestling. And at least she had one a couple of years ago. Who knows if she's changed or matured in some way since then? We don't know. But we can say, I can say confidently, that Britt Baker was the best woman on the roster in twenty from 2020 to 2022 at the very least. In terms of promos and matches, there's only really one other person she could work with, that being Thunder Rosa, that would be in, in any way interesting in AEW. Um, I know that the AEW fan base like to pretend that Jamie Hayter is a thing. Look, Jamie Hayter is fine, but she's work ready, and it is what it is. She needs to know how to a personality. Personalities get over. Matches are what they are. But this again, we're talking about AEW here. 
in any event, um, if Britt Baker is not the best right now, and whether it's your opinion or whether you think about this as a fact, that's fine. The fact of the matter is, she doesn't need to be the sole star of the show. You now have other pieces and people like Willow Nightingale and Tony Storm and Mercedes and Chris Statlander and maybe some other ones that you're choosing to bring in that now they can work with her. So Britt Baker is the one who was the franchise player. And if you want to say she's not the franchise player anymore, fine. But she was. And now she has the ability to work with all of these new talent that you're bringing in. She can help them and they can help her to a degree. It absolutely benefits your roster to have Britt Baker on it. This ridiculous article saying otherwise is just silly, especially for the reasons that they're saying it. And then one thing you would say, well, she's the shits and then the end, <laughs> you know, but she was the shits. She was the shits in like 2019 or 2020, um, but she got better. You know, she was forced to get better because she was the only one that the company was hinging on in terms of being able to talk. And being given time and space to work. And now she's going to be able to, to work with people who are just as good or not better than her. And either she's going to be able to swim or fall off. And I'm interested in seeing which one. But the whole pick me thing is the most humorous thing. Because a pick me is just a woman who accepts accountability. Or tries to apply accountability to another woman. That's really what it boils down to. Are you a woman who tries to hold another woman accountable for her behavior? You're a pick me. You're supposed to be a girl's girl. That's what they call them now. It's like, whatever. <laughs> I don't have a, I don't have a horse in that race. But that's what I've noticed. If you're a woman with a good relationship with her dad, and uh, you try to hold other women accountable for their behavior, and they're debating or discussing issues with men and you're not on the woman's side you're a pick me and that's pretty ridiculous and that's a stupid reason to basically throw away a talented wrestler because you think she's a pick me it's like okay <laughs> all right but like i said uh i don't have no dog in that hunt let me know what you guys think though and i'll talk to you guys later